Hello, this is Captain Chaudhary. Today I'm going to speak about the rolling of the ship in waves and particularly the beam swell conditions. The swell is approaching from the beam. Now, ship has got its own identity. Ship uh, rolls according to her GM, according to the radius of gyration, according to the form that is presented to the sea. There are certain things which are known and there are certain things which are assumption. So everything that we talk about rolling of the ship in the waves, to a certain extent we can say that this is the theory. So I am talking about a particular theory in respect of the behavior of the ship in beam seas. <clears throat> As you know, if we talk about the still water rolling, still water rolling is uh, decided, the rolling period is decided by the GM of the ship, the radius of gyration of the ship or rolling coefficient of the ship. So accordingly there are different formulae, right? Uh, what we are trying to focus today is in the beam seas, how the ship behaves. Uh, we may uh, draw a ship that is inclined like this. This is the mast. Say for example, this is the wave profile. There is a person standing on the deck. So for this person vertically above him is his zenith. So according to the zenith which is vertically overhead we may say this is the level of horizon. So if we look at this profile we see the various levels. There is this level that is the deck level and the person who is standing on the deck sometimes he feels that he has to balance himself with the deck but then there is another level that is the horizon level you know perpendicular to the observers zenith so that is the level which will decide the gravity part of the person now there is a third level that is apparent level that is the level of the wave itself so accordingly there are three normals to these levels right so the person who's standing on the deck is going to compare the deck with the water level so the apparent role that is going to feel is the angle between the deck and the water level whereas the person who's sitting in his cabin or looking at the inclinometer in his cabin he's going to compare the inclination of the ship that is the level of the deck with respect to true horizon that means he is going to see the angle between this perpendicular and this normal right he's going to find this angle in the inclinometer there's something called apparent roll and the other one is the actual roll. The apparent roll is the one which is going to be felt by a seaman on the deck and actual roll is the one which is going to be experienced by the master when he looks at the inclinometer. Now, uh, if we talk about a wave then from this point to this point, the distance that is the points of the same phase, the distance is called lambda, the wavelength of the wave. And let's say that the wavelength of the wave is 180 meters. When we are talking about the beam seas and when we see the beam, uh, when we see the waves approaching from the beam, you can approximate the distance between the crest. Like when the crest hits your ship side, maybe part of the water comes on the deck. Right? You can also find out what is the wave encounter period. The height of the wave is from the crest to trough. Right? This is H and half of the H is the amplitude. Let us say that the H is equal to 5 meters. Right? And you can see that the wave is horizontal here, horizontal here, horizontal here. Somewhere in between there is a slope. And what is the maximum slope is given by the formula alpha is equal to pi H upon L. So uh, let us say... Uh, the height is 5 meters and 180 meters is the length that is the wavelength of the wave. Let us find out what is the maximum slope that is 3.14 multiplied by uh, 5 equal to divide by 1880. That gives me 0 0.087. Uh, this is in radian so I multiply by 57.3 and that gives me 4.99 or approximately uh, 5 degrees. If you have a wave of length 180 meters and the height of the wave is 5 meters that is from crest to trough then such a wave will have a maximum slope of 5 degrees. We will be using this figure 5 degrees when we talk about the synchronized rolling 
that happens in case of a beam uh, swell hitting the ship from the side right okay coming back to this diagram we have a very special formula in respect of the ship that is rolling in waves that is a beam swell formula is theta is equal to a sin 2 pi t upon t0 this is the first part of the formula theta is equal to a sin 2 pi small t plus lambda upon t0 a and lambda are the constant this is the own rolling of the ship now in the second part we will consider the influence of the system influence of the wave system that is uh, approaching the ship from the beam side and that influence is t1 upon t0 whole square remember this t1 upon t0 whole square is the ratio of the wave encounter period and own rolling period t1 is the wave encounter period and t0 is the own rolling period the whole square multiplied by alpha is in the numerator and in the denominator we have t1 upon t0 whole square minus 1 okay and this is to be multiplied by sine 2 pi small t upon t1 so i have a formula for the vessel that is rolling in the beam seas and that formula is a sine 2 pi small t plus lambda upon t0 plus t1 upon t0 whole square alpha divided by t1 upon t0 whole square minus 1 the whole thing multiplied by sine 2 pi t upon t1 so before we understand this formula it is important to know about t1 and t0 t0 is the ship's own uh, rolling period t0 is influenced by various factors like gm of the ship and the weight distribution uh, here uh, you might have come across two formulae one is t is equal to 2 pi k upon under root g into gm and another formula that is gm is equal to f b upon tr whole square now here k is radius of gyration radius of gyration means where do you assume the weight to be concentrated how many meters from the rolling axis that is the radius of gyration here we see that the periodic time is directly proportional to the radius of gyration and here what we see is f has taken the place of radius of gyration in a way in both the formulae you will find that there is a reciprocal relationship between the rolling period and the gm here we find that the rolling period is inversely proportional to under root of gm and here what we find is gm is inversely proportional to the square of rolling period right uh, uh, what is the sum and substance of these two formulae is number one if the gm is more the vessel is rigid the rolling period is smaller and if the gm is small then the rolling period is large that means the ship is more relaxed in rolling the ship's rolling period is more rolling is more comfortable another factor which decides the rolling period other than gm is the weight distribution so to understand this particular characteristic let us assume a container vessel if generally the heavier containers are near the rolling axis the ship's rolling period will be smaller whereas if the containers heavier containers are placed on outer side then the ship will roll more easily the rolling period will be more that is t0 now let's talk about the t1 t1 means suppose you have a ship uh, looking at the waves coming from the side then every time the crest hits the ship side you might have some shipping water so it's not very difficult to find out what is the wave encounter period so that is t1 t1 depends on a lot of factors for example it might be depending on the depression the intensity of the depression it might be depending on the ocean that you are talking about every ocean every sea is like a musical instrument so how the size of musical instrument decides you know the tone of sound etc we may say that all these oceans are like musical instruments and uh, there are a lot of other factors which decides the frequency of encounter and one of them is the depth of ocean if a wave wants to travel across the ocean it needs a suitable depth for traveling so all these factors they affect t1 
T1. So T1 might be say 12 seconds for Atlantic or it might be 14 seconds for Pacific. T1 wave in counter period, T0 own rolling period. Alpha is the maximum slope that we talked about and we had said that if there is a 180 meters long wave with a height 5 meters, it will have a maximum slope of 5 degrees. It was given by a formula pi h upon L. So maximum slope, we will see what is the application of that maximum slope. But here in this formula, small t is the instantaneous time. Now let us see what happens because of this formula. As I said, this is the own rolling and this is the impact of the wave or the effect of the wave. So suppose the ship's own rolling period is 14 seconds and wave encounter period is say 18 seconds. In such a scenario, what happens is this ratio T1 upon T0 whole square becomes more than 1 because T1 upon T0 is more than 1. Because of that, denominator will be positive and because the denominator is positive, the entire term that is the impact of the wave system is positive. It means the wave has got positive impact on the rolling of the ship. Suppose the ship is in this part, right? This is normal to the wave profile ship rolls on the same side as the wave wants the ship to roll. So you will find the wave to be like this. There is a person who is standing on the deck. He finds that this is the ship's deck and this is the wave horizontal. He gets a diminished impression about the wave system. He does not get scared. But a person who is looking at the inclinometer in his cabin, he finds the roll to be so big. The captain is worried the ship is rolling so much and this will happen when T1 is more than T0 where the impact of the wave system is positive and the behavior of the ship would be like this ship rolls along with the waves right a person on the deck gets diminished impression about the rolling now let's consider another situation whereby T1 is less than T0 now let us say T0 is uh, 14 seconds and T1 is equal to 9 seconds. So T1 is less than T0 which will mean that T1 upon T0 is less than 1 and if this is less than 1 the square also will be less than 1 and if this quantity is less than 1 minus 1 will give a negative quantity. The denominator becomes negative the entire term becomes negative. This means that the impact or effect of the wave system on the rolling of the ship is negative. Which means that if the wave wants the ship to roll on say starboard side, the ship will go on the port side. Ship will as if want to roll within the wave system. So what happens? We will see in this diagram. Suppose the ship is in this part and this is the uh, normal to the wave surface. The ship wants to roll on the opposite side. Ship rolls into the sea. And there is a person, there is a person who is standing here on the deck or who is standing here on the deck. He finds the wave surface to be much inclined to the deck surface and he, if he looks on this side, he finds the wave surface going very steeply down. So he gets exaggerated impression of the rolling standing on the deck. But the person who is standing inside a room and looking at the inclinometer, he will find he will find the heel to be not alarming. He will not get an exaggerated impression. He will get the diminished impression looking at the inclinometer. So let's take a third situation where the wave encounter period is same as the rolling period. And that is what will give rise to synchronized rolling. Suppose the ship is synchronized and rolling to the beam waves. Then what happens if the ship is rolling to the starboard side? She'll be rolling say on the crest and in the same position when you get trough, ship rolls on to the port side. And again on the next crest, she rolls to the starboard side, but the angle is higher. And then when she rolls back to port side, there is much higher angle. When she is lifted up in the crest, she rolls on to one side. When she comes down on trough, she rolls on to the other side. And every alternate roll, the rolling increases, the amplitude increases. I had calculated the maximum slope. The maximum slope, that is alpha, was given by pi into h divided by length. So we had got 5 degrees as the maximum slope. 
Now 3.14 that is pi multiplied by 5 divided by 2. This will give you the increase in the amplitude in every alternate row. So 3.14 into 5 equal to divided by 2. That gives me about 7.8 degrees. Let's take the round figure as approximately 8 degrees to understand this concept. A ship rolls to the starboard side by say 3 degrees. Then on the trough the rolling will be 3 plus 8 that is 11 degrees and once again on the crest when she rolls on the other side the roll amount will be 11 plus 8 that is 19 degrees and again when she rolls on the port side the roll amount will be 19 plus 8 that is 27 degrees and so on. So this particular behavior of the ship's rolling should alarm a ship's officer. Alteration of the course or reduction of the speed or both will break the synchronism. We have to break the synchronism in such a way that the wave encounter period changes. Mathematically it can be shown that as the amplitude increases in every alternate roll, the amplitude will keep increasing and the increase will take the amplitude to infinity. In practice what will happen is the ship might capsize. Uh, we might find that after taking a very large roll, suddenly the vessel comes to almost upright. She gets a lot of vibration and the ship comes once again to upright. But in the next moment, uh, the synchronized rolling starts once again. I will show the graph uh, to understand the behavior of the ship rolling in uh, beam C. Y axis is forced amplitude. And this one is T1 upon T0, the X axis. T1 upon T0 can be less than 1. T1 upon T0 may be equal to 1. And over here, T1 upon T0 is shown more than 1. As T1 upon T0 closes to 1, it tends to become equal to 1. In fact, in a situation where T1 upon T0 is exactly equal to 1, the amplitude, the forced amplitude tends to become infinity. And what happens when T1 upon T0 is more than 1? Own rolling period is say 10 seconds and the wave encounter period is something like 24 seconds. Then what will happen is the wave will decide what is the forced amplitude. For example, what is the maximum slope of the wave that will be approximately the forced amplitude of the wave system and this is the graph that represents the three situations namely t1 upon t0 less than 1, t1 upon t0 equal to 1 and t1 upon t0 more than 1.